Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at a combo that many people have been sleeping on in terms of applying a huge amount of damage in a short time frame. The Sanguine, Alchemy and the Viathan's Breath are two exotics that were both looked down upon at one point, but now are seeing a huge resurgence with the recent buffs they've received. You may not believe me when I say this, but this is one of the easiest big DPS builds that even a new like player can use for many in-game content. And with the power of Warlock Void abilities at play, you can in aspect actually use this to solo a number of tough content that you would never really think about. It's not going to be a game changing setup that everyone will use, but it's definitely going to give you more options to explore for set scenarios. To start, you're going to want to have Feed the Void where defeating a target with Void abilities grant you Devour. Then you want Child of your Gods where upon crafting a Rift, you'll cast a Void Soul. Damaging a target with Void Soul will drain them and give you back Grenade, Midi, Class Ability and Health for the user. My plan is going to be similar to a lot of my builds that use Child of the Old Gods as a basis of the setup. We will activate our Rift and Old Gods effect and use it against a group of adds that are easily accessible to reach. Once done, I will then use my Grenade to net a kill to trigger Devour and start using my Primary to create both Orbs of Power and start building up Void Souls all over again. The moment you get a chance to, you must get Devour up and running, as we will be using Empowering Rifts rather than the Healing Rifts to survive. The fragments used are Echo Explosion where Void Ability Final Blows causes targets to explode, Echo of Instability where defeating targets with Void Grenade grant volatile rounds, Echo of Undermining which provides users a 15% grenade debuff, and Echo of Persistence where Void buffs applied to you are extended. Since Devour and Child of your Gods can only do so much, the damage increase being provided should be enough to help support your outgoing damage when even your healing effects are out of use. This will be important as there will be a number of times where you can't stay in your wrist for too long as the incoming damage may be too much for even Devour effects to support. For the mods and stat section, we can keep this area relatively light as both recovery and discipline will be the key for the build. The main one you must focus on is the recovery speed which ours is at tier 8, as this combined with Sanguine and Old God effect, from tier 7 to 8 you do not need to reach a higher tier as the effects from Sanguine will allow us to pause the countdown timer of our rifts and have them out for longer. On top of that, having bolstering detonation mod is also extremely handy when paired up with a fast grenade cooldown like magnetic grenades, as this means you can then use it more often compared to the more heavier grenade types available. Your Discipline should be at tier 7 as we will be making use of the Font of Focus mod which will provide us with a plus 30 to the current stat we have, so overall a tier 10 for the duration we have. The simplicity of the stat means that you have more freedom to decide on what grenade type you want to use best, but I would wholly recommend you use the Magnetic Grenades because of their low cooldown rate and also for the ability to detonate 2 times on the target. Anything with a low cooldown rate is highly recommended. But if you're using Vortex Grenade more often, then the choice is yours. However, you may want to have a weapon with Demolitions on hand to help you down the line. After that, you are left with armor charges to deal with, so having charged up will expand how many charges we can carry at once. After that, having the Firepower and Harmonic or Void Cypher mod will further help with creating orbs at a faster rate for us. Reaper is also recommended with Powerful Attraction mod as both of these in hand will allow easier access to faraway orbs. All of this now will be built into the Void Weapon Surge mod times 2 which will be providing a 17% damage boost for as long as we can keep our charges up and going. And yes, I know about the incendiary effects that Sanguine provides, but this is more for when you can't use your rift to make use of that buff there and then. Now combine this with Time Dilation mod, Harmonic Reserves and Harmonic Scavenger mods and you can make your bow fire ballistic missiles with devastating effects. Now lastly, the weapons being used should fit the end game approach as much as possible. For my primary, I have the Age Orb Bond with Repulsive Brace and Golden Tricon, which is a neat role to use if you don't have the version with destabilizing rounds. Our beam is always going to be a great perk to have on hand as the following will increase your survivability rate once triggered. With Echo Instability, and the following fast grenade cooldown, you can use this to trigger non-stop volatile rounds and extra overshields when required. Golden Tricon also fits well within the build as this will be giving you an active damage buff on top of the damage buff we have going. 
this is where the weapon becomes quite favourable for me in raids and dungeons, as the quick access to buff along with the surge mods meant that damaging miners to major threats was less of an issue to handle. Now, as this is a raid weapon, not everyone can get the following weapon easily. Luckily, the build doesn't require the must-have primary void here. If you're new to the game, then Yesteryear, Norn Hunger, and Grid Skipper are easy weapons to get from either Zer, Banshee, or Drifter. Everywise, it's going to be the Leviathan's Breath Exotic Bow. The following has received a wide number of buffs from a 30% damage increase against champions, perfect draw applying in volatile rounds, and even getting a catalyst as well. The weapon is now a beast to use against a wide number of enemies, and I have seen it start to be used quite a lot against the final boss in the Ghost of the Deep Dungeon. Because of its strength alone, this is where the build can enhance the weapon even more to become a big damage dealer, which I can proudly say it excels well in. When it comes to endgame builds, we are already familiar with a number of builds that everyone and their mums are confident with. From Void Hunter to Strand Titan, these simple builds allow users to take on some of the toughest contents that Bungie brings to us and rewards us upon success. Now this build is sort of a in-between of being a endgame focused setup while also being heavily off meta. What I mean by this is that the key to making this build work in your favour requires you to constantly have a source of healing and survivability just to survive long enough in these higher tier content. Now this isn't so much for the case for the build, as the only source of healing we have is coming from Devour, but also hoping the damage we do makes taking out higher tier less time consuming. Instead of me using healing risk for the focus of the build, I will be using empowering risk for that 20% damage boost, on top of the Sanguine Incendiary effect of providing a 17% weapon surge mod of matching element. We then have the debuffs such as Echo of Undermining for 15% towards targets, and the Child of Your Gods also providing the same effect as well. Now, against Zorak in the Ron raid, I was getting around a 40 to 50k on our impact, and then a 70 to 90k upon detonation, which roughly comes to around 130 to 140k in total. This was near the same against Deseract, although the damage was more akin to 150 to 170k damage if you were also hitting its critical parts. Justice alone is quite handy with deleting things like champions, tormentors, and many, many bosses. But also, the flinch damage it does is so good that it can make certain mobile enemies less mobile and more easier to target. The strength of Leviathans and Sanguins together is something that a lot of people are generally sleeping on in terms of easy to use and killer combos to utilise for most content, and this pairing was once looked down upon for how weak they used to be. Although, when it comes to the DPS, this isn't something I would highly recommend if you're up against a boss with a very short time frame for DPS to be applied, unless it's controlled. The build suffers quite a bit because of the slowness of the bow when being used at max, and unless you get the catalyst, this will reduce some of your damage output by a bit. I also don't recommend you use this in something like Grand Masters, unless the Nightfall is very easy to play in the Master, because of the lack of healing involved. We have Devour on hand, which is amazing when you're able to net kills to extend it for long, but most GMs this may not always be the case. Unless you're very fast and can make use of cover fairly well, then using this in GM Lightblade for example is a great way to rage from the game. Outside of the downside, the following is still viable in much harder content, and with the flexibility of weapons allowing you to accommodate key areas of fix some of the disadvantages to build has, you'll be a great asset to your team. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below, but at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub right here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, I thought more stuff like this than I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.